back when I started, gentlemen didn't sue gentlemen, and companies didn't go hostile against other companies. It just wasn't done. And that was all changed in the late 70s. I got to think that would be great to be involved in. So we had to develop, over time, an effective M&A offering, and I had to change the culture to some extent of Sherman and Sterling as a relatively young partner. It, it took a lot of time, a lot of effort. We had to break some eggs internally and externally to get it done. One of the earlier and, and important uh, M&A deals we worked on was, was the, we were on the DuPont side when DuPont bought Conoco, which is a big oil and gas company. I think that that time was the largest deal ever done uh, it had multiple players. Uh, Seagram had started it by, by trying to take over Conoco. Uh, Mobile had gotten into it. And we had uh, our, our team, we had us, and we had uh, Bruce Wasserstein and Joe Perella of First Boston. We were down in Delaware every week. Uh, we, we had a big team working on it. The shareholders had to decide between our offer, which was conditional on getting control, Seagram's offer, which is a lower price and simpler, but was not contingent on getting control, and Mobile, which had the highest price but hadn't cleared any trust. And we finally won, although Seagram, because they were willing to buy any shares that were offered, ended up being the largest single shareholder of DuPont. And it ended up, as everything does in the world, at a shareholders meeting where the deal was approved, but in the course of getting the deal approved, some shareholder uh, got up to the meeting to complain because he said his dog was a registered shareholder and they didn't allow the dog in the room. So th that was just, you know, how there's always a, a human interest story in all of these. But that at that time was the biggest of all deals, and it involved an exchange offer, tender offer, highly complicated, and uh, ended up being very successful. You asked me about Viacom Paramount. I got a call from a banker I knew of Merrill Lynch, who said, you're going to get a call from this guy Sumner Redstone. He owns a string of theaters in Boston. He's taken a position in a company that was then called Viacom, that was the, how it was pronounced, and he needs somebody to do some filings. Probably won't be much of an assignment because he's never ended up buying, buying any things, but will you handle it? And I said, sure. I talked to Sumner, and we did the filings for him, and uh, uh, I assigned, who was then my best associate, Philippe Doman, to the account, and he ended up doing, you know, handling it pretty much. And it turned out Sumner wanted to buy the company. We got into a huge, we got into a huge bidding war because the management group was trying to take the company private and Sumner was trying to take it away from the management group. We ended up buying the company uh, on leverage and, and Viacom at that time had uh, two great, almost secret businesses, which was MTV and, and Nickelodeon, which have both turned out to be, at that time they were very small, both turned out to be big. So they, they grew and they got bigger and better. And uh, Sumner uh, started talking to uh, Marty Davis, who ran Paramount. And um, Paramount, um, agreed to a deal with us. It more than doubled Viacom. Paramount was a bigger company than Viacom. And uh, it would have created, it was a transformative deal in the media industry. We invented a lot of new securities in that. We had to do a deal with Blockbuster. We had to buy them in order to get their resources to buy Paramount. Uh, we brought in Verizon as, as, a, as an investor. Barry Diller brought in Comcast and uh, John Malone and all his companies. It was, a, it was a huge gathering of the clans in the 
media industry to fight each other out, and Sumner won, and we, and we got the company. Haven't really talked enough about all the great people that worked with me and taught me and everything else because it, it, is, it, is, a, it is a group effort and if you're going to build something in a law firm you have to give people a lot of responsibility which I tried to do and uh, a lot of the great deals at Sherman and Sterling during that period were done totally away from me and done as well or better than, than I could have done them. So I think that's very important to remember and that's not that's not obligatory how humble pie, that's the way it really happened. The learning experience was unfiltered and generally, for people who wanted it, very good because you were really, it was much more like a teaching hospital. You were assigned generally to a partner and so you got to see very good lawyers, you got to see how they worked, how they thought, how they dealt with clients. It was the best teaching experience in, in the world. It's a very important part of my life, always has been. I obviously found the Business Week article that said you were the master of the M&A universe. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a gross exaggeration. A hero only in my own mind. <laughs>